All right, so for my digital class this semester, we are working on honors projects to kind of make up for the, the fact that the state doesn't allow digital art to curriculum within a community college setting. So to help you guys with your portfolios a little bit, especially in the areas of, of animation, of comics, of illustration, of pre-production design, of concept art, we're gonna work on a character design some character design lessons. And we're going to start it pretty simply. Uh, some of you have already done this for yourself. There are a lot of good resources out there, but I'll show you kind of the way I approach it. And we're going to look at character head design. <coughs> when you are able to log into PhotoBucket, our class PhotoBucket, if you go to Digital Art 2, you will see under Digital Art 2 assignments, the first one is what's called a cast sheet. And so I'm not trying to be too ambitious here, but we are working towards this semester towards a character cast sheet of three characters minimum. And these are our original characters. Come on, open up. So these are some past student creations. And a cast sheet is kind of like a police lineup. They're all shown on the same even plane, so you can see their proportions equal to each other. And for character designers, this is the name of the game. And this, these casts grow through the seasons or through the uses, through episodes, through video game levels. You just keep adding on to your cast sheet. Whether they're human figures, imaginative figures, animal figures, whatever. If there are characters that you can tell a story through, they belong on your cast sheet. So how are we going to approach this? Well, first we're going to design the head. So if you go to our Canvas page, just go to our home, you have access to my website just by clicking on my picture. right? And if you want to use our kind of Photoshop programs at home, you can just scroll down and click on the camera, and you'll get to the online photo editor, Pixlr. So I'm going to attempt to do all these kind of honors lessons in Pixlr to show you how similar it is to Photoshop and how you can do all this without having to buy something expensive. So in Pixlr, I'm going to create a new image. And we talked about resolution a little bit today. I'm going to just call this one Head Shape Sketches. And what should always be at the front of our file names? Our own name. So Carl Head Shape Sketches. It gives you a lot of preset scales. I want to go for <coughs> the largest it allows, which is 1024 by 768. This is really only good for web publication, but that's fine for digital sketches. Okay. I don't want it to be transparent. Okay, now if you go back to my website and you click on my little icon there and we go to commercial art, we can see some, some examples of character designs and head sheets, especially under this one, uh, Pete's Dragon. So this is what a face sheet is, sometimes called an expression sheet. And what it needs to have minimum is it needs to have a front view of the character, a side view of the character, and a three-quarter view of the character. Mine here are kind of showing a whole range of expressions. Ultimately, what you do is you design the head front and side first before you build a body to go with it. All right? So this is also where we can uh, brainstorm a little bit, loosen up. I'm going to choose a soft 20 pixel brush with an opacity that's around 80. And I'm going to brainstorm. I'm going to do um, a character. Let's make it even smaller than 80. Or smaller than 20. Let's do, 50. Let's do 9. So I had this idea of kind of little kid barbarians. And I was thinking of it as Kindergoss, and then I saw that Kindergoss is actually a comic of little uh, 
emo kids. Well, mine's a little different, but I'm just going to go with that working title for now. If it comes time, I need to trademark it or copyright it. I'll figure out something that works. And now I just have to think of two shape designs. So heads are always made of what's called a cranium shape and a mandible shape. So if you think of a, a standard skull, they're egg shapes, right? This is from the front. And then from the side, the skull looks like this. You have the cranium, which is circular, and you have a mask-like mandible. But when you're designing your own characters, you just want to play with multiple arrangements of two shapes, just kind of loosely. Maybe they start with circles. Maybe they start with something else. And just fill your page with these doodles. This is the first kind of loosening exercise I want. This is especially necessary if you're used to always drawing in a certain style or a certain way. I want you to see that it all breaks down to shape, first and foremost. So you see all these shapes are overlapping slightly. Now I'm going to switch colors. And you go to a blue. And I'm going to try to turn these into faces. And I might even do that on a new layer. So what's nice about Pixlr is you can use Command-Z to go multiple steps back. I create a new layer on top. I'm going to take that background layer, double click it, or unlock it by clicking on the lock, change it to layer 0, so that I can take its opacity down <coughs> by going to the settings on the layer and just toggling it down. That allows me on layer 1 to kind of draw in eyes. So if I'm drawing kind of a Marvel's comics character, I would use the regular skull, put the eyes on the eye line, put in a hairline, you know, make what looks like a pretty commonplace hero or villain. Right? And then I would match those things to the side. Put an ear in that fits between the eye line and the nose line. And we'll get into these particularities pretty soon once we've <coughs> sketched a little bit. But for these shapes, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. I have to decide where the eye line should be and kind of cut a line through. Usually it's halfway up the head from the bottom of the shape to the top of the shape. And then I do an action line which shows the curve of the head. That's where the nose would be. But you can try experimenting with, with uh, eye lines that are up near the top. Eye lines are even down a little bit. Notice I'm drawing eyes, but I'm not really following any rules as to how close together they should be or not. I'm just drawing the action lines and the eye lines. It's a great way to doodle and play with face designs. Now a big downside of Pixlr is that the brush is not sensitive to pressure, even though I'm using a tablet. Right? And that's one of the advantages of HTML5 browser programs like DeviantArt's Muro, but you have to set that up, or something like Photoshop. But these honors lessons are about you know, doing a lot with a little and just following your dreams in whatever capacity you have. Okay, so now I've got a lot of action lines. I'm going to make a new layer. This gives me a lot of practice. Let me stretch those layers out. Turn off the ad within Pixlr. I'm going to choose a different color again. <coughs> and now I'm going to flesh out these faces a little bit. What goes on the line underneath the eyes? Well, you need to fit a mouth and a nose in there somehow. The nose can be various sizes and shapes. You can leave as much room as you want for the, the mouth. You can make it opened or closed. So here's my eye line there. So there's my nose and my mouth. But you're going to see you have certain tendencies that repeat themselves over and over again, even in these kind of ridiculous shapes. You want to pay attention to those somewhat. All right. 
And now you want to think, okay, which ones are most appealing? <coughs> which ones do you think you might actually want to do something with? And I'm drawn to, to these two down here. Drawn a little bit to this one. And a little bit to this one. Now this is what you would call a pear-shaped caricature. This is closer to a light bulb shape. This is definitely a light bulb shape. This one's more like an eggplant or something. <laughs> and so you can kind of understand ways you want to work. This one is a very difficult one. So how might this be turned into a character? Well, you would just add an ear, you would add a neck, and you would figure out how to resolve this weird cranium shape into maybe a hairstyle. Exactly. And you're gonna balance out the character, right? But any one of these can be turned into a working character design. You can always add shapes for hair on top. You can refine shapes, add details. And this is basically how the art of caricature works as well. So I have a vision of a little kid with a Viking helmet, right? So this is gonna inform that. And so now on a new layer, and maybe a new color, this would be my last one, maybe a dark green. I'm going to draw just a really quick kind of targeted sketch. So I'm thinking maybe my shape should look something like that, a little light bulbish. My eye line in the middle, my eyes fairly large, or at least spaced large between nose and mouth, but then I want the top to have this Viking helmet. Right. And so I'm thinking that's the direction I want to go as I do more refined sketches next time. Now what's great about that, and what's great about sketching digitally should you want to go that way, is I can then copy that <coughs> and make a new layer deselect because I, I copied with command C and I'm going to fill this layer using the paint bucket and using white. So I have a blank white layer, build a layer on top of that and I'm going to hit command V to paste my sketch there. And then just like we learned in class today, if I hit command T, I don't get to transform, it opens a new tab. But I can get to those transform options in Pixlr if I just go to edit, free transform. And the shortcut for that within Pixlr is control T, because this is browser based, so it's more like being on a PC than on a Mac. So if I hit control T on my Mac, let me select it first. Nothing happens, <laughs> bummer. I'm not sure why nothing's happening. Maybe I have something selected. So I hit Command D to deselect all. Yep. So I have to go to Edit and then just Free Transform. And then it will give me a transform box. And I'm going to stretch and play with this and put it off to one side of my sketch. Because this is what I can now work on top of for a refine, refine sketch next time. Whoops. You can always hit Command Z to undo. So I go to Edit, Free Transform, I stretch it, then I have to hit Return to lock it in. But if I want to squash him so he looks a little bit younger, all of that should work proportionally. Why is that happening? <laughs> Maybe Return is not what's going to work. Maybe I have to click on something else and then, then OK it. So Edit, Free Transform. This is good, it's giving me honors classes in Pixlr, seeing what they've updated. Okay, and then if I move to a different tool, it will ask if I want to apply it, I say yes. Where did it go? Hmm. Keeps doing something very weird. I'm gonna try, just to see if this is a glitch of my tablet, I'm doing this with just the mouse. So edit, free transform. Again, we learn through repetition. Click off.